Today we're going to be learning how to do a fabric finish on a guitar. It's called that because the design that we put on the guitar is actually fabric that uh, will be epoxied on and then we'll finish over it just like uh, normal wood. I already did the top. Um, it actually took me three tries. This is my first guitar that I'm doing this on, um, but now it's my third time doing it because I've screwed up so many times finally getting this perfected. So I figured with that much frustration I might try and show people how I got around some of the problems. Um, initially, um, the problem was I'm using a very light colored fabric. If you look at a lot of other fabric uh, topped guitars, they use a darker fabric, not no white paisley, it's usually black paisley. Uh, the problem that I had, as you can see here in this picture, is that the grain lines of the polonia, which can get quite dark, actually showed through the fabric. Um, you can see that here on the back that some of these grain lines are pretty drastic. This next step isn't actually required for everyone um, that's going to be doing this. Uh, if your wood happens to soak up a lot of epoxy, uh, that's when I would recommend it. This is a wood called polonia and it happens to do exactly that. Um, so what I did was I actually put a coat of epoxy and literally just took a razor blade and squeegeed everything off. So basically I let it sit, soak in the wood a bit, and then squeegeed everything off, so it literally just left what was soaked into the wood. Um, that's going to make it so it doesn't absorb as much epoxy next time when we actually do the laying of the fabric. Um, I'm going to give this a scuff sand, and then we are going to get into actually gluing down the fabric and what this video is all about. So now my body has been scuff sanded uh, to make sure that the epoxy sealer coat that I used is level. Um, and nothing in it is going to obstruct the finish of the fabric. Um, so what we're going to do now is we're going to map out where the fabric will be on the guitar. And we're going to cut it out just outside of the line so that we have a little bit of an overhang. Um, I'm doing this on a guitar that I have, uh, that I'm building out. Um, it can also be done on finished guitars. I just found it a little easier to do the fabric finish when the guitar was uh, still pre-routed. As you can see, it's not been routed yet. So it's cut close to the line. I'm going to do the fabric on it, and then I'm going to route the shape, do the roundover, and spray it burst around the edge. But keep in mind, it can be done on a, on a pre-finished guitar. Um, you do have to pull it back to the bare wood, though. Um, I do not recommend doing a fabric finish on top of a finish that's already on a guitar. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this out and then we'll get back to things. Here you can see how much I've left around the edge, somewhere around an eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch uh, all around the perimeter of the guitar. Um, wrinkles in the fabric can actually affect us, so since this came off of a cant of fabric that was folded over, it does have some wrinkles and creases and whatnot. So I'm actually going to go and iron this all flat and we'll come back and start gluing it on. So here are the products that we're going to be using. Um, I like the Clear Coat System 3. It's a very thin epoxy and it dries perfectly uh, clear. Um, I like it thin simply because it soaks into the fabric really well. Um, and also it has a really long cure time, so it gives you a lot of time to work with the actual fabric, make sure everything sits flat, um, which as you'll see in just a bit is quite important. Um, we're also going to be using Mixol number 25. It's a white uh, universal stain. So it's essentially going to add some opaqueness to our epoxy. And this is what's going to make it so that when the fabric gets wetted by the epoxy, the white areas don't become see-through. We're going to put just enough of this so that the white stays white and the blue doesn't get affected. Um, and the ratio that we're going to do for that is I'm going to mix up 30 milliliters of um, the System 3 clear coat with this little uh, plastic cup. You can get them pretty cheap that have measuring uh, stuff on the sides. And then I'm actually going to add 10 drops of this white universal tint to the 30 milliliters of System 3 clear coat. So epoxy is pretty messy, so I'm actually going to do it on top of this little tub instead of my desk because I just. I don't want to get epoxy everywhere on there, and this side really doesn't matter to me. 
So this is what the white looks like. It actually looks fairly white in the cup. When you take it out on the stick, you see it's just only slightly, um, slightly white. It still has clear attributes to it. It's just enough that it'll keep the white sections of the paisley white without the grain lines of the polonia showing through, and it won't be white enough to affect the blue. So all we're going to do is pretty straightforward. is pour most of it on the body, all around. Leave a little bit for later. And then we're just going to spread it out along the body. So while I do this, since it's pretty boring, I'm going to talk about some other methods that I tried, some things that I didn't like, um, and some things that I've heard that I shied away from. So a lot of people use tight bond. And I actually like the idea of using tight bond for this, um, except for the fact that I'm using this light fabric and I was afraid that the tight bond may tint such a light color of the white paisley. That's why I shied away from the tight bond method. Uh, that aside, I actually think the tight bond uh, method probably works pretty well, despite the fact I haven't tried it simply because of what I know about tight bond. Um, I've also heard uh, the use of contact cement. Um, I didn't like the idea of that, um, as well as someone told me, well, why not paint the, uh, paint the body white and then do the epoxy over it so that the, the grain lines don't show through. And I don't like the contact cement idea or the paint idea uh, for the same reason, actually. It's generally frowned upon to be putting things with a lesser adhesion um, underneath things that have greater adhesion. So, for instance, you don't want to put something like paint underneath something like epoxy. And that's just, um, in my opinion, that's just a general good rule to follow. It can cause problems down the road. And also bear in mind that um, Although epoxy seems pretty benign, you can get it off your hands and whatnot while it's still wet with alcohol. Uh, it doesn't really feel bad or anything like that. It is a sensitizing allergen. So um, I do suggest if you're maybe handling it like we are, to use gloves, at least on the hand that will be touching it. So now that we have a decent layer of it kind of sitting here, we're going to put the fabric on, push it down so it soaks through, and then we're going to start squeegeeing things out, any excess. All right. So the trick here is to try and get it on without any wrinkles, which takes some fandangling sometimes. So as you can see, I don't have it on straight. I'm going to have to move it a bit, which can be difficult in its own right because the epoxy does want to stick to it, even though it is thin epoxy. There we go. That seems to be about right. Like I said, I'm not too terribly worried about like small spaces where it might not go to the edge because um, this is a guitar that I'm building, and therefore it's not routed yet. I can make sure that the round over hits that uh, so it doesn't show up as a defect later. Um, on a guitar that's already been made that you're modifying, uh, you have to be a little more conscious of making sure it overhangs in all spots. So now that I've got general uh, adhesion of the fabric to the wood, I'm going to take the rest of what we had and just kind of pour it around the top as well like we did before. And this is going to just get more of this epoxy soaked into the fabric. We're essentially trying to solidify this fabric so that it's, well, not fabric anymore. We want it to be hard so that it'll take a finish just like wood will. This is where the razor blade comes in. And uh, we're just going to kind of make sure it soaks in everywhere.
Once I'm happy that the epoxy is soaked in nice and good, I'm actually going to squeegee off as much of it as I can. Um, and I'll literally just do that by squeegeeing and removing the excess. And this is also a good time to help you flatten out areas, make sure that everything is seated well. Once you stop really picking up epoxy, uh, you're done, and we can leave it to uh, let it cure. So here's how I'll leave it for now, um, as I will be waiting for it to finish curing up, and then I'll take a razor blade and just go around the edge of it and slice off the excess. It'll come off just nice and easy with a razor blade. And then before finishing, I'll actually put another coat of epoxy on here. Um, following the usual pour filler with z epoxy sort of schedule um, and that's going to give me a nice level surface to actually start putting finish on.